we do record all of these just to let you know. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, so welcome to GW Coders, everyone. Um, welcome back. So John will be with us in a little bit. Uh, he had to step out for a moment. So uh, before we get started with today's presentation, uh, we want to have a little time for any announcements or upcoming opportunities. And I know that Laura's here. So Laura, do you have any opportunities or things coming on um, that you want to mention from the library side? Uh, we just wrapped up a whole bunch of workshops. So I don't have, actually, I don't have anything new ready to go to tell you about it. Maybe at the end, if I have something, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, not too much new on my end either now that I think about it. There's um, an AI in the future of work workshop um, panel piece that Stanford's putting on. It's going to be free. So if anyone's interested, uh, you can just message me and I'll send you the link um, in Slack. But it's a free event coming up, I want to say, on the 27th. And they have a whole bunch of people big names, um, like one of the co-founders of Google, Condoleezza Rice, a whole bunch of people presenting on the impact that AI is gonna have on the future of work. So anyone who's interested in that, just drop me a Slack. Nope. Um, and the other announcement I guess I have too is that my PhD program, our small interdisciplinary PhD in human technology collaboration um, in the School of Education. We're starting our recruiting season. So if you know anyone who um, has or will soon have a completed master's and is interested in pursuing a PhD, um, and they're interested at the intersection of data science, education, learning, um, comp sci, cognitive neuroscience, any of those topics around how technology gets used in learning context, whether that's in K-12 schools or whether higher ed or corporate learning, we kind of sit in all those different areas. Um, you can also drop me a note in Slack and I will um, tell you more about the program. So we're recruiting probably for one or two students for next year. So we're a small program. We um, fairly intense and personal, so it's a good time. Brian, uh, I might mention one workshop coming up also. Oh, great. If you don't yep. mind, if, you, if anyone was here last week, I believe it was, you heard from Joshua Gleason, who's one of our multimedia um, instructional technologists, and he's giving a workshop on Tuesday on um, creating VR experiences with Unity. So if you're interested in that kind of coding at all. Um, it's an open workshop online on Tuesday, October 20th at 530. I'll yeah. put a link to it in the chat. Yep, that would be great. So yeah, that was um, some good stuff. So any other announcements from others in the groups? Um, any upcoming opportunities for students to get engaged? Um, there is a hackathon that the uh, Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship has on their website. If anyone's looking to participate in a virtual hackathon related to diversity and inclusion issues, and I believe that's coming up next weekend. I think it's a week from tomorrow. And that um, they mentioned that last week when Lex McCluster was, came to visit. He mentioned it in his talk. Okay, well, if there are no other announcements, I'll turn it over to um, Pedram, who's going to talk with us about the work that he's been doing um, with uh, David um, Bronitowski in EMSE, uh, who works closely with John as well. And so, and he'll talk about the team and what they've been doing with Twitter and COVID data. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, thank you so much. First of all, thanks for having me and thanks for this opportunity. I'm so excited. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Twitter and COVID-19 uh, with a focus on Iran uh, use case uh, and Iranians reaction on social media to COVID-19. I mean, COVID-19, pretty much everybody knows about it these days. Uh, about the team, uh, first of all, about the work, 
uh, I think I mentioned a week ago, uh, uh, we got accepted to NLP COVID-19 workshop. So that's another reason for me to be uh, super excited to be talking about this project today. And about the team, I'm Pedro, uh, and I'm a PhD candidate uh, in CS. Uh, GW and work, uh, I work with David uh, and I also uh, are doing research in NLP and machine learning lab and in CS department and uh, Puria uh, is, is a PhD from MIT and happens to be my brother <laughs> and that's another funny fact this is the first time my brother and I are writing a paper together and uh, and he also works uh, he's, a, uh, he's a senior associate at flagship pioneering and by the way uh, random fact is that flagship is the owner of Moderna that you may have heard of, uh, which is uh, one of the leading companies uh, who is uh, working on uh, the vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine these days. So Puri was like, uh, you know, brainstorming on ideas with us. And David, an associate professor at AMSC. Uh, and yeah, this is a team. Uh, and if you are interested in the actual paper, we have put a preprint on archive, uh, counter analysis of Persian Farsi tweets during COVID-19 pandemic in Iran. And we do have a public repository with all the analysis and, and uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, that we'll be talking about actually I, I show depending on how much time we have. But uh, what is the agenda for today? Uh, first, I'm gonna be talking about the story, how everything is started uh, to tell you really short uh, why we're doing uh, tutor analysis on COVID-19 and why Iran, other than the fact that I'm Iranian and I speak Farsi, that's my first language. And uh, in the second part of the presentation, I, I'll be talking about uh, a, a new cool tool, uh, which happens we have uh, 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 one, of the, one of the people uh, from this cool uh, uh, tools team, Laura, with us today, uh, the social feed manager. Uh, uh, so that's gonna be the second part of the presentation. I'm gonna uh, show you the actual demo. I'm gonna go on the website and show you how we collected uh, the data that we needed for this analysis and how truly SFM helps us to, uh, to get this project done. Uh, so first of all, how it all started. Uh, Iran uh, was among the first countries uh, along with China, Italy, and South Korea that were hit really hard uh, in the first wave of COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, when, I first, uh, when I say the first wave, uh, this is about February, early March, uh, in the U.S., uh, we, we started to hear about it, but uh, back in the time, these countries were having a really hard time and hit really hard uh, by this virus. And as part of my daily routine, when I was uh, seeing a lot of tweets on Twitter, you know, about COVID-19 in different languages, including Persian or Farsi, uh, I, I was seeing that Iranian users or, or Farsi users and by the way, Farsi is not spoken only by Iranians, but it's a fair assumption to say that the majority of Farsi speaking users are from Iran or are Iranian. And uh, th the one thing that I noticed is that a lot of users are making jokes about uh, COVID-19. And it was like, uh, it's not that uh, only Iranians make a joke about COVID-19. I mean, there are a lot of people who are making a lot of jokes about COVID-19 on social media. Uh, but I was like, hey, this is a pretty serious problem. And, and I remember back in the time in the US, at least, uh, we were more talking about, hey, if you should wear a mask or not, if social, for example, distancing strategies are effective or not. Or we also had like people arguing about different policies are being made about like to control the virus, the spread of the virus or the transmission, all those stuff. Uh, but again, the one thing that I noticed at the first glance was that there are a lot of jokes and, and being familiar with the culture of Iranians uh, who are pretty funny people sometimes, uh, I was really wondering like, hey, let's take a look at the tweets that, that, that became a question. I was really curious, hey, let's take a look at the tweets and see uh, w what topics are, are, are being discussed by the users and it is that satire or joke is the main topic that you're talking about or not? So that was kind of like the main hypothesis or the research question that we had. Uh, hey, let's collect some tweets, run some analysis and figure it out and, and find the topics. And for that, uh, we designed a system, uh, 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 pretty straightforward. We said, okay, we're gonna collect some tweets from Twitter, uh, Farsi tweets in, in particular, and uh, since we're gonna be extracting the topics from these tweets, let's uh, apply some topic modeling uh, methods, including LSA, LDA, and uh, we're gonna get a lot of cool results. We're gonna publish a couple of papers. Everybody's gonna be happy. 
And that was basically the plan uh, when we started to answer the question. But the problem was that, <laughs> hey, how or where do we get the tweets? Uh, th that was the first requirement. You know, uh, when it comes to Twitter analysis, most of the time, uh, you're talking about a phenomenon that has already happened uh, and other people have generated, you know, some Twitter collection for that specific topic or subject. Uh, so you can go and download the Twitter collection and start analyzing the tweets. Uh, but COVID-19 case was a little bit different. Uh, first of all, it was a new problem. We didn't have like any previously generated data uh, or Twitter collection uh, or tweet collection for that specific topic. Uh, and second of all, we had a lot of stuff coming up like every minute, every hour. So we needed to have a tool uh, to be able to retrieve and extract the tweets real time. Uh, because, you know, it, uh, an hour could, could matter, like uh, a week could make a difference. Uh, so that was a problem. And we said, okay, let, let's figure out how or where we can get the tweets. And we realized Twitter has an API. We said, yay, I mean, we can go and, and, and use the Twitter API. It's a very well-documented API, very clean, the developer API and a lot of useful meta information about the tweets and you can pretty much do anything that you want uh, with, with that API. Uh, but what's the problem with that? And we said, uh, if Twitter has an API, then, then what? Then, then what's the problem? Uh, well, the problem for us was if you want to get access to the Twitter API, you have, su you have to submit an application. So it's not publicly available for everyone. And, and Laura, please uh, correct me at any point <laughs> about any of the details uh, that I'm talking about the Twitter API. Uh, and uh, if you submit an application, it could potentially take a couple of months. And uh, that was my case, uh, like before, uh, like knowing about any other tool at GW, I uh, applied for, for, for an access uh, to a Twitter API. And this is the status of the application that I, uh, you know, I, I took a look at it last night to just to make sure what is going on. And the application is still under review. And the one time I heard back from Twitter was uh, with a bunch of questions asking me a lot of like, you know, questions about the details of my use case. Hey, give us more information and we might, uh, you know, get back to you at some point. Uh, but the good news is that uh, GW has one solution for his community, uh, thanks to Lara and her team as social feed manager, and uh, which truly made it possible for us to, to get this research done. Uh, so social feed manager, first of all, what, what is social feed manager? Social feed manager, as, as they describe it, is basically a tool for an application that can help researchers or pretty much anybody who is interested in doing some sort of analysis on social media data or somebody who might want to archive uh, a collection of social media data. And uh, it already supports a, a couple of social media platforms, including Twitter, which is probably the most well-known uh, social media platform supported by social media Excuse manager. Me, can, can I interrupt just to ask a clarifying question and repeat this? Sure. Sure. Did you say that social feed manager is, is that a tool specific it's specific to it's not specific to Twitter. No, no, not Twitter. So Twitter is one of the social media platforms supported by uh, social feed managers, but but we have like Tumblr, like Flip, uh, other social media platforms. As far as I know, four social media platforms. Laura, um, you can chime in to correct yeah. me. Yeah, that yeah. We, it has does connect to sign a Weibo also, but usually most people want to use Twitter with it. So just to clarify, it's a it's, app, it's an application, a Python application, actually, Python Django application that we developed in the libraries with um, some grant support. And we run it, we host it and run it and make it available to the GW community to use. It's a Python tool proprietary to GW. Well, it's open source, but we do have it available here. And I'll put a link into the chat um, with some more information about it and how you can connect up with us if you want to use it also. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is basically the second part of my uh, presentation. This is a link. I'm, I'm going to be opening up the, the link to show you the actual platform and, and how you can collect the tweets and run a, an actual analysis. Uh, but before like uh, opening uh, the platform, there are two things. Uh, I'm glad that we have Lara here. The first thing is that if you're outside the GW network, you have to connect uh, to the GW network using a, a VPN or virtual private network. So that's the first step. 
And the second thing is that, uh, as Laura mentioned, uh, uh, pretty much for anybody in the GW community is accessible. So uh, you can either schedule a meeting. I mean, pre-COVID, I had the chance uh, to actually meet uh, the SFM team in person. I talked by my research. I got a lot of useful feedback uh, from them, even about the design or how I can approach the problem. Uh, or you can send an email uh, to SFM at GW, or you can talk to Laura today <laughs> and <laughs> that we have here. Uh, and I, I, from my experience, super responsive, super nice, and, and, and uh, really, I'm really glad that, that we had the opportunity to use SFM and truly made it possible for, for us uh, to get this project done. So now I'm going to open the SFM library and let me see. Just let me know if uh, I, I try to, you know, to zoom in a little bit to show you. So I assume everybody can see the, uh, the, the SFM, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, so this is basically the first, uh, or, or pretty much the dashboard uh, of Social Feed Manager when you enter the website, when you log in uh, after that you got access uh, uh, to Social Feed Manager. And uh, the structure, I mean, to simplify the structure, uh, uh, basically you have uh, sets uh, of collections on Social Feed Manager. And uh, you can create different sets. For example, in our case, uh, we were working on COVID-19. We created a new set called COVID-19, you know, to organize everything. And we put everything related to COVID-19 in that set. And uh, the one thing I want to mention here, and by the way, uh, Laura, feel free to chime in if you have like any point, if you want to add anything. Uh, because I'm sure that you know a lot more uh, about Social Feed Manager uh, than me. Uh, but uh, these are the sets uh, that we created, like COVID-19, uh, but there are also some, some shared sets, uh, which is a, I think is a pretty cool thing about Social Feed Manager because there are some topics that uh, uh, they, they have already worked on. They have created some uh, collection for uh, on different topics. For example, we have Iranian uh, protest. This is very random. It's, it's not just about Iran. It's, it's uh, about a whole bunch of like different topics. Or for example, uh, we have about trauma administration, trauma opposition, or Twitter sampler stream, uh, or U.S. election. Uh, so uh, if, if you before creating a new set, you may also want to take a look at the shared set. You you may find uh, something that you need uh, already be there. So you, you don't need to create a new set. You need to run. Uh, uh, something on, on the server to, uh, to start collecting, but you can uh, use uh, the already created sets uh, on there. Uh, but in our case, COVID-19 was a new problem. We created a new set. We called it COVID-19. When you go uh, to that set, uh, you can define a, a couple of collections. So that's kind of like a hierarchy. You have set, and within each set, you have a couple of collections. And in our case, uh, we were interested to collect uh, the tweets related to Iran's COVID-19. So we created uh, an Iran-COVID-19 collection. And as you can see, uh, the status of the collection is on. It means that it's, uh, it, it's uh, collecting tweets real time now. And uh, I'm gonna go and open uh, that specific collection to show you how we define that filter to collect uh, the tweets that we wanted or we were interested in. And then I'm going to show you how you can actually, in reality, extract the tweets and use it in your analysis. But I'm not going to be creating a new collection here. But just to give you an idea how it works, when you say add collection, uh, these are uh, basically, this is another nice thing about Social Feed Manager. They have already defined for you uh, the different types of like uh, collections that you may want to create. Uh, and Twitter is, is uh, pretty much like the most popular one. And for Twitter, for example, you can add a Twitter user timeline or, for example, a Twitter search, uh, which is our case. Uh, and if I, for example, click at, at Twitter search, uh, there's going to be a form here. So I can choose a name, uh, the description if you want. And uh, you can, this is like an a, a, a important point. Uh, you have to choose the credential. Uh, and in my case, for example, because I'm working uh, uh, with uh, Dr. Brunatowski at, at his lab, uh, I have access to his credential or DMSA lab, which is his lab. Uh, and you basically choose the credential. 
this is the part that I'm not sure if Lara, if, if there's like any limitation on the number of uh, collections that you can actually create, if there's like any quota or, or limit, there's no limit. So that's, that's not a cool thing. So you have to just uh, choose your credentials and just create the collection and, and that's it. And you can also like choose if you want to share uh, your collection with any other group. So that's like the part that I showed you. Some of the collections are shared and some of them are not. So that, that is an option that you have. Uh, you can choose it. But since again, since we can ask a quick created, question. Sure, yeah. With the credentials, how did you get the credentials? Uh, good question. Like, is that list I, automatically populated when you create your account or do you then have uh, to as, create it? As far as I remember, I created an account then I uh, contacted SFM and they gave, uh, they gave me access to Dr. Bruntowski's credential and, and the DMSA credential. But I think Laura can, can answer yeah. that question probably better, yeah. Yeah, so SFM as an application has Twitter credentials as an application to collect. And then when somebody sets up their account in Social Feed Manager, there'll be a connect Twitter account button and that will manage connecting out to Twitter to get part of the, the remaining keys that are needed to do the collecting. Um, and then because Pedram is part of a research group, we set up a group within SFM so they could share their credentials. But that's, that's a totally optional thing, just depends if you need that. What if there were a social media platform not already listed in GWU's collection that someone wanted to research? Would you have someone apply to add that through you or through this link? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to talk with you about what might be involved to set that up, but I could also recommend some tools, depending on what the platform is that you want to work with, it can recommend some alternative tools that, that might work for you. Okay, thanks. Okay, because I assume it has to be an open API tool, so you right. can't probably go to WeChat or something. Um, right, like, so if you want to collect from Instagram, for example, I would probably send you to some other tools or, or YouTube. YouTube does have an API, but we don't have it yet coded to do collecting from within SFM. Um, it kind of depends on what you need and what, as Ryan is saying, what API they provide or don't provide. Just, uh, thanks for your explanation, Laura. Just one point actually, uh, uh, because I'm also part of the IDDP, the Institute of uh, Data and Democracy. Uh, there we have access to CrowdTangle. So that is another platform uh, specifically for uh, extracting information from Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit. Uh, so if that is your case, uh, you, you can probably, I, honestly, I don't know what the process is in, on, on, on IDDP side, but uh, you can at least actually contact them because crap, and, and, and I believe CrowdTangle has also a public version. So you don't necessarily have to be part of an institution or something. Uh, to be able to use it, but CrowdTangle is a very, uh, like another useful tool and, and, and it's under active development. So uh, again, back to your question, if, if you want to uh, receive information from Instagram or Facebook or Reddit. Uh, so that's another option. Yeah, uh, and Rebecca from the IDDP is coming next week to talk with us yeah. too. So she'll be here next Friday to talk about what the Institute for Data Democracy and policy is doing. Okay, then, then I pause here. I, I, yeah, I, I <laughs> let Rebecca talk about it. But like that's another thing. Uh, but here, uh, COVID-19, uh, again, uh, we, we had a collection COVID-19. And then uh, we were interested in retrieving some specific part of the tweets, not all the tweets, uh, but we had to filter some of the tweets and get only those that we are interested in for analysis. For that, you have to define a filter for the tweets. And the whole concept of tweets, uh, the filter, uh, to simply put, is that you choose some of the hashtags, for example. It's more than that. Uh, I'll show you in a second uh, what options you have for that. But in our case, for example, we saw some of the hashtags associated with Iran COVID-19 on Twitter. And we went and manually chose those hashtags and then created a list. And then came here. And this is actually the, the way that you can uh, basically create a filter. So when, when you uh, uh, want to define a new filter, you're going to be seeing such a form here. And uh, it has multiple options for you. So the first thing is the track, which basically is a field that you can put some of the keywords that you're interested in uh, the tweet. So in my case, again, uh, we track manually some of the hashtags on Twitter 
and this is pretty much uh, uh, most of the time what you do. So if you are interested in a topic, you go on Twitter, you see some of the hashtags are trending and you can create a list for yourself of those hashtags and then uh, you can put them together, comma separated and put them in the track uh, uh, text area, text box area. And that way, the set that you create, the collection that you created would only retrieve the tweets with those hashtags included. And uh, there's a very like detail since the hashtag is, is following basically the Twitter track, uh, you can basically go uh, to the Twitter track. There's a lot of like different options that, hey, uh, for example, if you, uh, what, what symbols you, you should include in the track, like the values, all bunch of details uh, and what are the parameters. I'm not gonna go, go into that part, uh, but you can take a look, very user-friendly, very detailed information. Uh, but again, as a big picture, in our case, we, we created hashtags, we put it in the track, and there are some other cool options that we didn't use, but you can use. Uh, for example, if there's a specific user on Twitter who you want to follow uh, and only get the tweets from, you have the option to put the names here. So that's another thing. And also you have uh, the option to, to set the location, which is another useful thing. So, sometimes you may want to run some analysis specific to a location, geographical location. So that's another cool option about that. And another great thing is the language. In our case, we were only interested in Farsi or Persian tweets. So we had the option to uh, put the code of that language, FA for Farsi, and that way only get tweets in written in that specific language. So that's another useful thing. And then basically you can save the filter and then uh, start running the collection. And that's gonna be a start in collecting the tweets real time. And as you can see now, I have already activated the collection. So it means that it's, it's, it's uh, collected the tweets uh, as we talk. And so far since February, we have collected more than 8 million uh, 600,000 tweets uh, and uh, the data collected 6.8 gigabyte and uh, there's some other like information about the set uh, I'm going to show you really quick what it looks like so you have a lot of changes uh, so for example uh, when we started uh, as you can uh, as I can show you here when we started there were just a limited number of trending hashtags on Twitter uh, so we started with probably five or six hashtags. And then after a month, we realized there's some new hashtags coming. And then we added those hashtags to our filter. So that's another option that you have. So if you started with something, you can temporarily stop the collection and then add the new hashtags to the track and then start the collection again, uh, if you want. And this is what, what we pretty much do. Like after uh, every couple of months, we see if there's any new hashtag trending, we stop the, the collection temporarily, add the new hashtags and then start it again. And these are basically the log of the changes that we have made over the course of the past couple of months. And uh, yeah, th that's pretty much it on the collection of the tweets side. But let's say you have been collecting the tweets and now you want to actually use the tweets. Uh, no what are you gonna do? Sure. Um, sorry to interrupt. Uh, can you share no the um, link? Uh, you just showed the web, uh, web page, I think, the last one or, um, on your screen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I can actually put it in the, uh, the chat, but yeah, it's sfm.library.gw.edu. Uh, no, 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 I'm saying the other uh, web page you were explaining, the last one, last tab on your browser. Yes. Oh, this one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you go at, if if you go to the uh, like edit uh, the, the the this the very place that you can uh, define the sets there there is going to be a link for you let me let me show you uh, like here and edit so if you go here like uh, underneath of the track uh, text box area there is also a link the track link uh, oh. that basically yeah if, if, that's great. But I can also I see. Thank uh, you. put it here. Yeah. And also I have a question, uh, like after your, sure. how do you export the data? Yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about now. So uh, let's say we're collecting tweets, uh, whatever number of tweets we have collected. Now we want to actually download and export the tweets and use it in our analysis. 
So this is actually where the export uh, button is for. So when you hit the export, you have a couple of options. There are a couple of different formats uh, that you can use in order to export your tweets. Uh, so first of all, uh, you have the option. Uh, you, you have the option that if you want to convert or export all the active seeds or, or, or all the seeds or only those seeds or the collections that are active. So that, that's like one option that you have. Uh, as for the format, you have the Excel, you have the CSV, you have the TSV, the full JSON, which is going to be a little bit like more a, a, a larger file because you have like all the meta information of the tweets. And this is basically the standard Twitter API format. So this is the very format. And then you also have another cool option. You have the JSON of limited fields because sometimes you may not really need all the meta information about a tweet and in order to save some space, you can just get the JSON of the limited fields. And you also have the text file of identifiers. So based pretty much all the standards uh, formats that, that we see in data science and data analysis, uh, you have access to, you can just basically choose one of the formats. I usually choose the Excel or the full JSON, but again, it, it's really up to you. And then uh, you can choose the number of records in each file. And uh, for example, I know uh, based on experience that if you're going to, uh, you know, export the files to full JSON, it's going to be a large file. So I try not to choose, for example, a million <laughs> record in a JSON file because technically it's going to be impossible for you to download the JSON file. So uh, that's like one thing that you might even consider, but 250,000, I would say uh, is a pretty standard one. But again, it, these are the details uh, that is real up to you, what number you want to choose. And then uh, there's also a cool option that we use a lot in, in, in the Twitter analysis, uh, which is a deduplication of the tweets. Uh, so especially in Twitter analysis, it happens a lot that uh, you see a lot of duplicated tweets uh, and then you're going to be unnecessarily having a, a large file that could potentially be reduced by, by removing the duplicated records. So that's another cool thing about uh, the platform. Uh, so uh, I, I, again, it's up to you. Uh, but there's like another option that you have. And uh, you also have, you know, the option to limit the records that you want to, uh, to, to export uh, by date, by a specific date. Uh, uh, we, we don't use it, but again, another option that you have. And then once you chose all of these options, you hit the export button. And depending on how many tweets you are exporting, it might take a while. So for example, uh, to show you a real example, uh, I, I, got, uh, I did an expert last night, like around, uh, I think, midnight of all the tweets. Uh, and at 4.27 uh, uh, AM, I got the email that the expert is ready. So you're going to be receiving such an email, SFM expert is ready. And that's how you know uh, your files are ready to go. And then you basically open the email. There's a link. And if you open the link, uh, there's going to be for this one is probably a problem. I don't know why, but uh, I can show you like another example. The SFM is ready, for example. Yeah, because I've already like converted a lot of them. Yeah, something like that. So when you open the link uh, and uh, w w when the files are converted, you can basically go and, and, and download the files. Uh, they are there. And in this case, I converted my files to Excel files, to, to Excel format and all the information that I wanted, uh, basically from the Twitter collection are there. And that's gonna be an Excel file, uh, but let's see how uh, you can use that Excel file. Uh, so this is a Jupyter Notebook, again, very simple. Uh, this is one of the files that I directly got from, from the Social Feed Manager website. And I'm using a pandas data frame uh in order to load the data it's up to you what, what, what library you want to use but that's a pretty like uh, uh, a useful and popular uh library in order to work with the excel files of data frames uh, on jupyter notebook and i basically loaded my uh file directly uh, got from social feed manager and as you can see i have all the fields that i need uh from from the tutor and, and in our case specifically uh the the field that we were interested in was this text field. I can show you, for example, the DF that I like, for example, record number, uh, the second record, the text. 
So if I run it, I have access to the raw text of the tweet, and that is what we use as input to our uh, LDA or topic modeling analysis and do all sort of analysis. So that is actually uh, like so far how you can basically create a, a filter on a social feed manager and click some tweets, export it to Excel or whatever format that you like, and then uh, come to your environment, whatever it is, Jupyter Notebook, load the data. And from now on, then it's up to you, like what, what kind of like analysis you want to do uh, on that data. In our case, it was uh, uh, the uh, uh, topic modeling, LSA and LDA. I would be happy to go into the details on that analysis, but I'm going to pause here uh, to see if, like, if there's like any question, any confusion or something about the stuff that we talked about. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, other than the hashtags, are there okay. with other keywords on? For example, somebody might um, post a tweet and then um, with no hashtags, but the tweet, the post has some um, keywords that we need. Yeah, you, 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 can, you can basically use the keywords uh, uh, and put them in the track. So that track could be either the hashtag or a keyword that is included in that tweet. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a hashtag. Oh, and if you okay. notice it, yeah. So if, if, for example, if I go to the edit, uh, let me see, actually go to the filter, like the COVID-19. Yeah, this is the track. And all of these words that you can see here, some of them might be hashtags and some of them might not be. Some of them might be just a, a simple keyword, just a string of, of words that you mm -hmm. can use yeah okay, so back to I your see. question it could be either hashtag or keyword okay yeah yeah um i see thank you and also i have a question can you get um comments uh what do you mean by comments you mean uh, mm. the, the re replies to the the tweets yes yeah yeah so basically uh in twitter api a reply to a tweet is a tweet itself so if you go to the meta information, uh, there's going to be the type for each tweet. Some of them are original tweets. Some of them are retweets. Some of them are replies. So you're going to be having the meta information to distinguish all of these tweets. Uh, and you can actually see what tweet that is specific to is replying to. So, so you're going to be having all of these information in the JSON file that you get from Social Feed Manager. Oh, how, uh, how is that information listed? And um, is it like a sub um, column or is it yeah, like? So, oh. Yeah, I, I can, I don't know if I have a sample here, but, but it's pretty straightforward. I can tell you that uh, in the JSON, you're gonna be having an object in the JSON and that specific object is gonna tell you about the original tweet of that tweet, if there's a reply tweet. So for example, oh. let's say, uh, yeah. So I can actually show you like, for example, like. Mm, a real example um, Twitter. That way I can only see that uh, from the, the um, a JSON uh, format or how, how will it be listed in a CSV file? Is it a separate column or is it? The, 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 uh, I don't exactly remember the, the file, but I do know that the information is there and you can e get easily access to it. So I, I don't like exactly remember the, the name of the column or what column it is, but uh, these are very well documented on the Twitter API. I, uh, so, okay. yeah, but, so but, just, as... but just to give you an idea of how it looks like, so this is, for example, an original tweet on Twitter, right? So for okay. that tweet, we have, for example, 26 retweets, okay. and we have like seven code tweets, which is a new thing about uh, Twitter. And this is a retweet of the original tweet. So this one itself is a tweet with a unique identifier. So you're gonna be having this saved in whatever format you choose from Social Feed Manager in the file. And then this, uh, you, using the identifier of the original tweet, you, can, you, you, you know that for example, this tweet is a reply or retweet of the original tweet. But again, so, uh, I, I don't, yeah. So in my file, I will have both uh, people often call this one and the new blah, blah, blah one. Yeah. Again, I don't exactly remember but, uh, the, the name of the column, but this is the website that you want to uh, go to, the, the Twitter developer API. So they have a very mm -hmm. uh, you know, detailed documentation about all the fields. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, this probably, I, I'm gonna like see if there's a- Yeah, Pedro, I think you can see in your pandas data frame, the column heading there. Okay, let me see Yeah, here. and I'll just- um, because, because this is an Excel file, I was not sure if we have like access we did, to Yeah, we included that, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure in the export. Okay. Yeah. So this is the uh, this is the Excel file. So let's see. So we have the ID of the tweet and the URL of the tweet. Yeah, there's one that should be called in reply to user and in reply to status. In reply. Yep. Yeah, you just passed the type where it tells you was it a tweet or a retweet. Maybe you can. Yeah, see, this like, there is oh, the type. Oh, yeah, this it's is, probably uh, been um, excerpted in the view here. You know how it's not showing all the columns. Yeah, I, I can I can yeah. list it actually. So this is the list all of all the uh, mm -hmm. columns that you have. Yeah, exactly. So in reply to screen name, or in reply to status ID, or in reply to user ID. So that is actually the way that you can, uh, uh, you know, retrieve the information of the original tweet if the, the tweet is is not an original tweet. Pedro, I have a question too. Sure. And thank you for sharing this. It's very interesting. Um, sure. You mentioned that if you wanted to follow one particular uh, user or follower of Twitter, in this case, yeah. that you could do that. So what information would one need in order to follow a particular follower? I think Laura, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the screen name of, of, of the Twitter account uh, that, that you want to follow. So if, if uh, Yes, yeah, so if we go to the crew, the, the Iran COVID-19 case, and uh, this is the filter and the follow, uh, yeah, the, the, the user IDs, uh, that's what you need in order to like follow. Yeah, the, you can use, account. if you want all the tweets by a particular um, account, there's actually another collection type called user timeline that you can use, mm -hmm. and that will collect all of that person's tweets. Um, and then once that gets running, you get the numeric ID, so you don't have to look it up separately. And you can use that numeric ID in the follow parameter that Pedram was showing on uh, in SFM to get um, replies to those tweets as well. It's another way to get replies that Twitter Could provides. You, um, it, while she's speaking, do you mind just showing where she's talking about that user timeline where, where that is found? Sure, uh, uh, Laura, is the ID in the Twitter, is that the ID that you're talking about that we don't need to like? Uh, no, if you go back to SFM. Okay. And if you were in one of your collection sets. Okay, so let me just go. Go up a level there. And then when you go to add collection. Yeah. There's a, a user timeline. Uh, the first one listed there, add Twitter user timeline. The one above yeah, where you are right now. Actually, yeah. yeah, so it's another yeah. collection type, which we, uh, you don't have to add that to yours right now, but just to show Elizabeth, yeah. once you get in there, you can set up a, one that's specially designed to collect particular user accounts. And once mm -hmm. you once you create this collection, then you can provide either a list of accounts or just one at a time add accounts to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm it's, happy to meet with you too to like sort of go like deep dive into it yeah. also if that's if that's useful as well. I, I think forthcoming it may be incredibly useful um, but I also wanted to ask regarding regionality you said that you can um, set this up to collect from a specific region so how is region verified meaning is it You know, like if I'm using a VPN, I may not necessarily be in DC, right? So how how does this know for sure? I mean, this is this is a very good question, and this is like uh, one of the things uh, that we faced during analysis. Uh, so we didn't use any kind of like location, but this is how it works. Uh, so sometimes, uh, again, Laura, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, some of the users on Twitter self-identify uh, uh, themselves and, and set the location on their Twitter account. So that is a way, like the easiest way probably to figure out uh, where they're, they're coming from, their, their location. And, uh, and in the majority of cases, uh, there's no such location field uh, for a Twitter account. Uh, but I do know that there are some libraries, the one that we're using is from Johns Hopkins University. I can share the link. 
so given a tweeter uh, with all the, given the tweet with all the meta information, it would automatically uh, uh, specify the location of the tweet. Uh, I haven't looked into the details of the algorithm, how it works, but uh, that is basically a way. But I mean, honestly, it's going to be really hard like to tell uh, uh, yeah. At least from our experience, we decided to you know skip that that uh, step for now. Uh, but uh, I, I would be happy if, if somebody like ha has a better idea on that. But these are like the things that I know, uh, like to dealing with, with the location. Yeah, yeah, that's so right. So we like, think it's based upon an algorithm according to what's been uh, self-proclaimed on Twitter. Uh, b both uh, and in cases that the user uh, uh, didn't necessarily so, so proclaim, they have a way to figure out like where potentially the tweet is is, is tweeted from. So th th that that is. But again, I mean, I, I would say it, it's not going to be exact, and that that is one of the reasons that we decided to to, to skip it for now. But uh, but yeah, th th that's pretty hard, like to know where exactly the tweet is coming from. Yeah, like something like fewer than 2% of tweets or Twitter users, I'm not sure which one it is actually, um, inc turn on the option that would provide their coordinates on their, with their tweets. So I think that you're talking about like some, some users then at, their, at the user level will say the place that they're located or sort of generally where they're tweeting from and it could be accurate and realistic or it could be totally made up. Uh, exactly, yeah. So like your mileage will vary with what you get um, trying to rely on that information. So it sounds like in your research, Pedram, you're using the Farsi language as kind of a proxy for the location sort of to get at Iran. Yeah, so, so we basically, I mean, we, we simplified, we said, hey, I mean, all the Farsi users, but we, we don't necessarily have any idea if all these users are tweeting from Iran or, you know, we, we have a lot of Farsi users outside Iran. So uh yeah so th th that's what we don't know like for now it it's pretty challenging can i ask a question about deleted tweets uh sure <laughs> yeah so this this sort of scraping and collection is done it seems like once you set up the the collector it just goes out and gets what's out there which i guess there's some memory of all the tweets that have ever been tweeted by each user but what if they delete something would you not observe it Great would you question. have to rerun it once and then a month from now and you see that it's gone and if you didn't capture yeah. it there's no way to get that or that, that, that is a good question uh laura can can compliment my yeah. answer but the, 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 the thing that w what we do like in, in the previous analysis that we've done is that we collect some tweets uh for example for bot detection i see that uh people do it a lot so they, they uh, collect uh, tweets and they have the IDs of the tweets and then after a couple of months they go back and they try to retrieve the very tweet with the very ID and if it doesn't exist it means that it's deleted. So th th that is like one way of, of doing but uh, as far as I understand I mean I, I think Laura can probably answer that question better than me. Like, uh, uh, no everything yeah. you said is right there. Um, so yeah. when when SFM or any tool to connect to the APIs is collecting tweets you're getting what's available at that moment. Um, so through the filter, the filter is sort of a real time streaming of tweets. So you get those as they occur. It's possible the user will later delete their tweet. Um, you have it in your data set at the moment, but they've deleted it off the platform. Um, the other APIs that you saw, the search API and the user timeline API, they go backwards um, in time. And so if somebody has deleted something before you've collected it, again, you won't, you won't have those deleted tweets. Um, the, the only way that, so in order to share tweets, um, you only can share the identifiers of the tweets according to Twitter's terms of service. So researchers will share their identifier set. Um, and then somebody else can take those identifiers and try to re-query uh, Twitter to get those back. To, they call it hydrating the data set. And in that case, you're probably going to have holes in the data set. You can't actually fully reproduce it, you know, as you're, as you're pointing out, John, because the um, tweet just doesn't exist anymore. It's a real issue with social media research is trying to recreate the data sets or share data sets um, in these circumstances. Yeah, but does that, the that's user actually... ID that you're mentioning, does that prove non-repudiation or is there another mechanism for non-repudiation? Uh, I'm not sure if I follow. So what, what is the way, if one, if someone wanted to prove that a tweet came from, you name the source, an individual, 
versus someone else? What is the mechanism in, uh, this is called, excuse me, um, SM, SFM for proving that? Oh, I Meaning don't think somebody can't come back and say, hey, um, no, that wasn't me. Did, yeah, I mean, SFM is just recording the data that it gets back from the API. So it's what Twitter yeah. provides. Um, and we, we do check like whether you can record whether it's a verified account, for example. Um, that is a field in the data that comes back that you could use if that's helpful in your research. Um, but there's, yeah, there's no, there's no way SFM can do that. It's just uh, how, what, what Twitter provides. That's a, that's the, a next level thing. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's a, that's a cool topic actually to work on. I mean, if, if you get the data from SFM, yeah, yeah. So I, but my, I guess that multiple kind of people going to that next step with what you know to let's okay now let's this is something particularly interesting that this user has said. So now I want to go find this user and prove that this is the user. You know, for example, mm -hmm. in an investigation, I would think that that would be very helpful. Yeah, and I guess if you had multiple feeds going, like if SFM was doing multiple things, you could triangulate against, because if someone deletes it, then you can triangulate, did multiple people have it before potentially, or to track it down, if you had the ID, the I mean, tweet I, ID. Yeah, if you have the tweet ID, you could see if somebody else yet yeah, had also had it in their collection on mm -hmm. a similar topic or from a similar user, just based on that ID, I guess. I mean, I, I should also point out that Twitter asks that researchers respect the intent of content creators and that if somebody deletes their tweet, you respect that, uh, like in their control over the content. So the terms actually talk about, like, you, it, I think um, Twitter would prefer that nobody work with any deleted tweets at all. Um, if that's been deleted, you shouldn't, you shouldn't continue to work with it. Um, I think there's an argument that when you're talking about bots or you're yeah, talking about right. That bots or public figures, you know, like the president's tweets, for example, which are public record, like that's a different, I think that's a different situation. Um, that's why I asked this question because so much of the most interesting research questions I would have are when and who deleted a tweet and why? And yeah. why did I not want people to see what I said? And I imagine that would be a really important factor for identifying if something is a bot or not. Like it could be a tool for figuring that out, but also just like the tweet rate. So, I mean, my sort of follow-up on that was, is there a way to sort of autom automate a daily updating or something where, you know, SFM is just every day rerunning the exact same thing and recreating it. So it's just gonna create a ton of data and it's gonna be a size issue at some point. But if I'm just tracking a single user, could I just automate this to re get a new data set of all their tweets every single day? Forever? Yeah, you can do, um, yeah, that is, so, uh, when you're collecting an individual user's tweets in SFM, there are two options. You can, um, you, the first time you collect it, you get 3,200 tweets, and then you can have your subsequent collections be incremental. So only the new tweets since the last time you ran your collection. Okay. Or you can have it set it to it's not incremental, and it always gets the most recent 3,200 every time it does yeah. um, its harvest. And you can set that harvest to be um, on any schedule that you want. So you could, I could imagine you could set up some sort of pipeline where you're running that kind of um, overlapping, repeating collection and see what happens. With yeah, I mean, that's, if I would do, that would be what I'd wanna do and then look at the holes a month from now. I, right. I, I wanna identify only the deleted tweets. <laughs> so right. here's the collection of tweets that were deleted on what day and what they said and why. And uh, it'd be interesting, I think, to, you know, <laughs> to um, find that to sift through that. Yeah, I don't know if you all know Katie Ballard in SMPA. She's done some research on, or is doing research on deleted tweets as well. Um, so if, you, if you, anybody's looking for collaborators on that topic, I know she's been doing some looking into it. Yeah, about the collection, the time, uh, I have a question like- um, Thank you, I gotta run, thanks. Sure. Thanks. Uh, what if- someone uh, delete the tweets and when we can catch it. For example, uh, if uh, someone posts a tweet and then it deleted like uh, three days later and then I collect, for example, like the, uh, the fourth day, then that, that is gone, right? You wouldn't have ever had it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and also I, I won't know like, right. uh, if I catch, if I 
But if I cut the um, tweet and then they delete it, I still have that information. You would in that case, yeah. Yeah, so, so you, you collect the tweets and then you can, yeah, if they're deleted, you already have the tweets and then uh, I assume you also know that if the tweet is deleted, because if, if you collect the tweets like after that, you're not gonna be having the, the very tweet. Yeah, so I'll have the information. Um, and how long does it take for the collection? What if uh, they did it during the during the collection? But I won't ever know, right? If you mean, I mean the the, the collection that at least the kind of collection that we are doing is real time. So so like basically like as as we go, tweets are being collected, and you can export the the output at any point. Oh, so, so it's real yeah. time. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. but but that expert can take, uh, uh, I mean, uh, from a couple of minutes to a couple of hours, depending on how many tweets you're actually exporting. But but the tweets are there, uh, no matter what, because they're they're being collected real time. Oh, but if they are deleting or not deleting, then I won't know, um, and I'll I'll just uh, collect like whatever uh, that um, the uh, Twitter has at that moment. Through the filter API, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. The other, the user timeline and the search one are REST APIs that go backwards. Uh, so they're on a schedule, which is different from the filter one, which is streaming. Yeah. Yeah, data, I mean, does um, Twitter say anything about how many tweets actually get deleted? Um, I don't, I mean, I think there are folks who probably tried to do research on that, but I don't know. I've never seen them. I haven't seen anything. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's not out there. Uh, no. I, I've okay. seen actually, uh, I've, I've seen the different collection is specifically in the case of Iran because we, we had like a lot of like cybersecurity cases, uh, like a lot of accounts attacking. So I do know that they released a couple of collections of the users uh, that were deleted and, and there were like uh, state sponsored uh, like attackers. So we have such collections available. Uh, so you can basically, but, but I haven't looked into it like to, to see what kind of information but what we do have a couple of releases from uh, from uh, Twitter uh, with such accounts that were deleted before because of like such activities. Is there any introduction file to uh, introduce like uh, what is the status ID, user ID, all those you know definition and where I can find them? I'm not really familiar with Twitter, so. Oh, I put a link in the dictionary in, in the chat to the data dictionary for the exports, yeah. which tells you some about the fields. And then that I think there's a link out there to Twitter's API documentation, which is oh, the okay. authoritative place to go look at that. Yeah. Thank you. And also I have a question about like for filters, um, can we do hierarchy uh, level? Like um, uh, for example, uh, I want all tweets that contains China and then within all those Twitter uh, tweets, I want uh, anything that contains uh, a bunch of keywords that are related, for example, um, technology, uh, you know, different uh, topics of technology, would that be possible? I mean, so, so, like so, and or. so I want China and um, maybe math or China and um, English or China and, uh, energy, something like that. Yeah, there are some ways you can get a little bit more complex. They do warn you away from getting too complicated with your filters. Um, so what the, the documentation there that Pedram has on the screen kind of walks through what some of the possibilities might be. Yeah, you, and, you, and we you, can you help can... you. I'd really recommend yeah. like you like let's set up a consultation and sort of walk through how to get this best configured for your topic. Um, yeah. That would be great. Thank you. But, 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 but I think that's a great, um, yeah. it's a great lead in for um, at the end of the month that John's going to present on how to think through the problems you're trying to solve with coding. And that's one of the main challenges, of course, is figuring out what it is that you want before you go about coding it to try to make it happen. And so meeting with Laura or someone else to think through okay. what are all the different issues so that you don't spend too much time going down paths that aren't gonna be helpful. So having okay. a clear idea of what the goal is then. Um, yeah, I have the a whole document about our goals, but I, I, uh, that's a project I'm yeah. doing right now. Yeah, I'll talk with Laura, thank you. Yeah, and, and, and we, we didn't have like, uh, we, 
don't have like time to go through this stuff, but as, as a super fan of, of reproducibility and research, we have already documented everything in Jupyter Notebooks, uh, I mean, Cephal Explanatory on, on the GitHub, just in case you're interested, you can take a look to see how we exactly use the text for topic modeling, all those stuff. Yeah. I'll put a link GitHub. to those in the chat. I'd love to take a look at that. That's great. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll invite you back to talk about it maybe later on this fall or early in the spring. Uh, as a follow-up, yeah, I think, sure. because I think that it, there's a whole other mess of coding questions that come out of that as well. Yeah. Sure. But we are past time, so I know that a lot of people yeah. have to run. Um, any other? Well, you can connect as well. Um, have you joined the Slack group yet for us? Can people reach uh, you no, back if they have questions? Not yet, but, but I would be happy to. I don't know if, if I should provide an email or uh, how can I be? John I can, can just add you. He has your email. Yeah, I can send you an email. Oh, sure. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah.